I told you guys, I will travel across the land searching far and wide to create what I believe is the greatest resource possible for the greatest fans in the world to win at Yu-Gi-Oh! I went ahead and called Jesse Cotton, Esala, Marcus Carice, Brian Chan, Walter Jewel, some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! minds in this game to put together their knowledge and my knowledge to give you guys the most informative top five meta decks of this format that you will ever see. Cause you know what? In Yu-Gi-Oh, there's only one thing that matters and one thing only. And that's winning. The world champion has been declared. Congratulations. Rice is just dope 2019. And then today. Winning can bring sadness or absolute happiness. Brian, you of Canada. Top five, baby, let's go. We're gonna start number five. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this cause I think this deck was so good. But the new promos, Here's what the new promos say to this deck I'm about to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, FU3000. That's what they say. Thunder Dragons. Nibiru, Dark Ruler. They destroy Thunder Dragons. They obliterate that deck. I'm sorry. They don't have no Jackal like we do. All right? They don't have Ibli or something. Well, they can play it, but they won't accomplish anything for that deck. That deck just dies to Nibiru and Dark Ruler. Plain and simple. They are now 12 cards to auto win against that deck. Hence, they will from number one and two down to number five, all right? Even Asala agreed with me. One of the most smartest Thunder Minds in the game agreed that at the moment, it, it, the Biru just hurts the deck too much until something cool comes out. He uh, even hinted you could maybe as a thought and Nyarla, Nyarla as a thought, but it's just, what are you gonna do after that? When you waste two level force if you're even gonna see them. Now, thanks to Asala, Big thanks to him. We got his deck profile for you guys. I told you I will do whatever it takes for you guys to have all the resources required to win a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. So if that's not worth the subscribe and a hit and the and a smashing the thumbs up button, I don't know what is. This is his deck profile of YCS Portland. What deck list I must say. So do check it out. Uh, it's amazing. He put Orcus in his Thunder list, and I think it's genius. So do check it out over there. Now, before we stop talking about thunders. Not, uh, guess who else I called about Thunder? Jesse Cotton, the famous second best, first best, whatever player in the world. Jesse Cotton, about his best deck, Thunders. And hey, it's not his upcoming list. I'm sure he's cooking up some crazy spice for after Nibiru, which I would love to get for you guys. But he was kind enough to give us his list for this past event. And let me tell you, this list is amazing. If you're playing Thunders right now, without the new promos play this list it's absolutely remarkable here it is he's playing gizmic orochi in it orcas nightmare just to get gizmic orochi i think that's genius i had that same thought before orcas nightmare or the trap crescendo could also get uh get orochi depending on the situation you could get the trap whatever if you don't have psychos light whatever but decks fantastic i absolutely love it so do check it out you have both of these amazing deck lists from asala and jesse thanks to the both of them Use these as your reference to build Thunders moving forward. It is the fifth best deck, in my opinion, with the new promos. Without the promos, it's number two. No bias. Pendulum best deck. All right, now we're going to go to number four. Now, this one is going to blow your mind because you're going to be like, how the shit is this number four? It is one of one of YCS, Sky Striker. It's number four. I'm sorry, okay? I don't, I'm not no meta sheep. I don't care if it won a YCS. The deck sucks. They want to know how to beat that deck. You go to turn three and tribute Jackal Pass. The, the, the second you get rid of Multi-Roll and the second you get rid of Kagari, the deck loses. The deck sucks. The deck, it, it's good, but it was hit too much already. It's so bad in the grind game now without a, another Multi-Roll or Kagari. All you got to do is take it to turn three and you win. Now, I understand. It just won a YCS. Hence, I'm putting it fourth and not fifth out of respect that it won the YCS. Shout out Brian Chen for creating a great list for it. It had five tops at the event. Thunders also had five tops. But at the end of the day, I put it number four. The promos don't hurt it. The new promos don't hurt it. But, hey. It's number four. It's my honest opinion. It's just not that good. I don't care if the new promos destroy every other deck. It is simply number four. It's just too easy to beat. You can also just go curious, send Imperial Order, Griffin, set, win. Sky Circus are so easy to beat. I don't know why you guys are losing to that deck. It baffles me. It literally baffles me. 
Anyways, if you want to check out what I think is a great Sky Striker profile, go check out Brian Chen's list I posted in yesterday's video. Yesterday's video will be in the description below. It shows Brian Chen's list, who finished first place at the event, as well as Garon Williams' list that finished top four at the event. Both lists are in my video I made yesterday, so do check it out in the description below. Another resource you would like to see for a Sky Striker list is my boy Marcus Carice. He also has an amazing Sky Striker list. So, if you want to check his list out, I will put a link in the description below for his list if you want to check it out as well. Now, on to number three. Salaman, great baby. I know you're thinking your trip. Are you? Did you hit your head? Because I just did. I'm trying to. That, what the hell did I do that for? Anyways, that beep keeps beeping. I'm pissed off about that beep. But it's okay. I'll let it go. Because I'm in a good mood today. Because I finally realized Salamanca actually is the top, in the top three after the new promos come out. You're thinking, yo, Trip, are you stupid? Salamanca is five. The striker at Thunder is way better than Salamanca. We have to understand something. I'm not talking about if they go head-to-head -head game one, no side cards. I'm talking about in a real tournament. When you have 12 side deck cards that obliterate Thunder. Infinity side cards that obliterate Sky Striker. We're talking about any card that stops spell cards. Which is the whole the Yu-Gi-Oh. Eradicator still exists. Like, Imperial Order. Like, you, you search all these cards so easily. It's unbelievable how the strikers are even doing anything right now in the meta. People just still think that they're dead, but they're not. So just side in a way to get those, you win. Anyways, Salamangri, what are you siding in Salamangri? Denko Seka? I don't give a shit. What the hell? The way, the real, I'll show you guys the real way to play Salamangri. So for Salamangri, I got you guys two resources. Walter Jewel top eight list, as well as his information on the on the on the deck, as well as my list, which I think is the third best deck, not normal Salamangri, because this version doesn't give a shit about your side cards. This version says, "What the hell are you side decking? Mind Drain? That's the only thing that's gonna help you, buddy." Twenty hand traps main deck. This is my list. I'm gonna show you guys right now, but I'm gonna show you guys Walter Jewel's list first. This is Walter Jewel's list with the idea that extenders aren't that important in Salamangri, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Because screw Stalio. I don't give a shit about Gazelle. I don't give a shit. The deck does not revolve around Gazelle whatsoever. The deck revolves around its amazing cards. It's all one card plus ones. Every card in the deck's a plus one. It revolves doesn't not just around Gazelle, but the whole deck. Wolf, Bailings, Jaguar, Spinny, Foxy. The whole deck's amazing. Right? The traps you get. Like Gazelle gets traps, but it doesn't rely just on Gazelle. And what's the most important part of the list? Hand traps. Now, I agree that the whole deck is just great 1-2 to two card engines, which in the grind game will win you the duel. So how about you take out my theory, is you take out everything that is not necessary at all. You take out all the garbage you just don't need. You play only the cards you absolutely need to play. And then, the rest of the cards only hand traps. And you added a tech of mine, which here's the, my list. 20 hand traps with Salamangre Gift. Now, what's your opponent going to do? Nibiru, your 5 Salamangre board you put up? I don't give a shit. You're still going to have a set Salamangre gift to search into more hand traps and infinite hand traps in your hand. You're going to have 9 cards that say draw 2, and you're going to have all these cards that just get hand traps, and you have infinite hand traps. So, and with Gazelle, every card you're plusing one every turn, you never lose in the grind game. And the whole format is going to be a grind game galore with the new hand traps. So this is grind game central, not caring if your opponent does anything to you. If they want to super poly your board, I don't care. Because the same board's coming back next turn, but now you have hand traps to protect you. And screw traps because your opponent will know what you're playing. So Salaman Great Gift, I think, is an amazing tech because it draws into your 20 hand traps, which I do think is going to be a new strategy. I don't follow meta, I create the meta. And I'm telling you right now that this will be meta. And if you don't believe me, I will take this list myself to an event and prove it otherwise. Because I think this list right here is amazing. Now, we're going to go to number two. Number two, Orcus. No, 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 I'm not just talking about pure Orcus. I'm talking about every version of Orcus imaginable. Why? Because, or let's say the Nibiru you're born. They don't know you're playing Pendulum Orcus. They don't know you're playing Thunder Orcus. They don't know you're playing Orcus ABC. Who gives a sh Orcus insert any deck that has a grape effect? It does, they don't know that. So what, what you do after they give you the token, they go, ha ha ha, ha ha, I just did be rude to you, ha ha. Uh, yeah, uh, summon anything, Orcus combo, topologic, go ahead. Right? Like, it doesn't matter. You can still do the entire, or you can topologic and Galatea probably, and you can still do some crazy stuff, you can do full Orcus combo after you get, uh, after you get Nibiru. So I do think Nibiru, uh, the Orcus will have crazy amount of play after Nibiru, 
And you can even Ibli them and play triple triple horror, triple nightmare, triple Ibli in a pure Orcas deck and still stop the Nibiru. So it's actually and Crescendo destroys Dark Ruler. So I think it has a great matchup against it. I think the deck, I think the Orcas card is just broken. I think Dengirsu is so underrated. And mark my words, I will eventually play Orcas Pendulum. I think that's just just crazy. Now, on to number one. The greatest deck in the world. I told you guys from the beginning, there's going to be no bias. Hence, Pendulums is only number one and not number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pendulums are amazing. Dark Ruler no more. Negate with Zephyr Divine Strike. Would you like the Nibiru? Negate with Jackal. My list right now is a top, is a 40 card list. One more thing about the Orcas. If you want to see a list to look at for now until the new cards come out, look at the, uh, the, uh, both Asala and... Jesse's Orcas Thunder list. I think those are the best Orcas list right now. Or look at an Orcas Pendulum list. I'll be posting it in a few days. One or the other, use those. Anyways, for Pendulums, for resources, we got my top four. My, sorry, my top 40. My 40 card list, which is basically a 30 card list right over here, which sums up Servant like nothing to ensure that the Biru does nothing against you, okay? Uh, like I said, all I can get you all the resources possible. You want you want the new hand traps to do nothing, the promo cards to do nothing, you play this list. 30 card deck with the servant resolving every time and making sure you get the time gazer you have nine ways to get that to protect it from ghost ogre and the deck's amazing it really really is and doesn't matter if you go first or second you put infinite negates and for those that play pendulum magician and turbo with one negate turbo or so 20 20 garnet one negate turbo decks with pendulum magicians please scrap your deck pendulum magicians sucked before sorry i love them but if, when you play like 20 of them or whatever, and they're going to suck even more with Nibiru. You need to play Servant moving forward. This is not debatable in the slightest. Anyways, hope you guys like this video, okay? If you got this far, hit the subscribe button. Pendulums really are the best deck this format with no, no bias whatsoever. I'm telling you, it's the best deck. The Pendulums really are the best deck. So hope you like this video. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you.